I've made many mob races on Algodoo, some as early as 2015. However, today, I'm going to start development on a game using Algodoo. If you didn't know, Algodoo uses the Thyme coding language, and I think I've picked up quite a bit of it over the past 6 years of me making mob races. This is going to be the first part of the series, where as you guessed it, I'm going to be making a game using Algodoo. I have had experience making games like with Roblox Studio, but this is my first time making a game using Algodoo. So with all that said, let's get started. The plan for this game was simple, I was going to make a platform more game where the player has to jump and avoid dangerous obstacles. So I first started with the circle which was going to be the character, then I went into one of my scenes to find code for key commands. Yes, I'm one of those people. After around 5 minutes of coding, I managed to make a simple player moving script. However, there's actually a much easier way of doing this. All I had to do was press geometry controller and it did all the work for you. But one problem I had was that you were able to fly which kinda ruined the main aspect of the platform game. To combat this, I made it where whenever you press the up arrow, your character would die. I know this is a boring way to fix this, but it works. I also made some signs that would tell you what the game is and all that type of stuff. The last thing I did before extending the course was making it where whenever the player presses all, they will be teleported to the start of the game. In the future, I plan to have checkpoints that whenever you press all, will teleport you to them, but I'll focus more time to that in the next part. Now we have a perfect restart to... Oh my. I made it where the player's velocity would reset when restarting. Now we can start on the fun part, course building. I wanted the course to remind players of a mob race, mainly because uh, pretty much every single scene that's uploaded into the algo box is mob races, and, well, I mainly post mob racing content. So I added a ball and ladle a spinner into the course. I also wanted to add a new feature called coins. Whenever you touch it, it'll disappear and a global variable called coins will be added by one. Here's proof that it works. Oh. Here's proof that it works. I totally got it in one attempt. In the future, I want to have a HUD that appears that shows you how many coins you have. But I don't even know how to do that. Like I mentioned earlier, I had a spinner. Out of all the advanced objects I made in this video, this one was definitely the easiest to create. All I had to do was do the same thing I do when I usually make spinners. Now I decided to make the spinner grey and that would be the same thing for every single spinner. I mainly wanted to do that so that you could differentiate from a spinner from a plain object. And I also want the course to be more colorful. After that, I started work on the enemies. At first, I wanted them to move back and forth, then I realized that the player can't even jump, because I apparently have the ability to forget stuff that I did 30 minutes ago. So I made the enemy jump instead. Alright, maybe I should roll the pal just a little bit. The last thing I wanted to work on for this video was the camera. I do have it where the camera follows the player, but you can easily move the camera around and zoom in. To combat this, I had a script inside of the player that forces the camera to be on the player on all times, and doesn't allow them to zoom. I don't really plan on releasing this game onto the Alga Box until it is completely finished, which will probably take a while. And also, I know that I'm late for this, but thank you guys for 500 subscribers. That's just absolutely amazing, and the 500 subscriber Q&A video will come out soon. See you next time.